Amém? Eu saúdo a todos com a paz do Senhor. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I would like to invite the church to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Luke. The Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 22. Luke 22. From verse 13. Amen. Luke 22, 13 says the following. So they went and found it, just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover bef with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will not long, uh, no longer eat for it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of, or of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup uh, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Amen. The church may be seated. We have another song. Let's go.
Glory to Jesus. My brethren, the week that has passed was a week, a festive week <coughs> in the Christian world. Was a week in which is celebrated a Jewish feast called the Passover. And the Christian world turns to this moment, turned their attention to this moment. And it's one of the feasts that is celebrated very much besides Christmas, the birth of Jesus. And also this week is a week in which people turn their minds towards this moment. It's an important moment in the history, in the history of religion. And Jesus here, he is part of this moment. Jesus throughout his 33 years that in which he lived here, Jesus separated his last three years on earth to uh, carry on his earthly ministry. And on those last three years, he fulfills the entire law. Jesus didn't come to break the law. Jesus came to give sequence to the law, to complement the law. Jesus came to bring the understanding, the prophetic understanding, the revelation behind the Old Testament, behind what the old, uh, the Ten Commandments, the commandments were. Because if man lives only off of the law, of, of what were the commandments and all of what was uh, given to Moses, man would never be able to enter into the kingdom of God. So Jesus comes to give, to continue his plan and to bring to us and bring to us what was behind the letter, which is the revelation, and give sequence, continuation to a new covenant, uh, to a new moment in the life of man. And here Jesus we can say that he celebrates the last Passover. His last Passover, but not like any of the others. The disciples, they were expecting that it was going to be just another Passover. The one that was going to be the celebration of the people that live in the Egypt, a moment in which they would receive from the part of God a deliverance from the claws of Pharaoh. And Jesus could not have left without leaving established the beginning of this moment, of this new covenant, this new moment, that the entire week Jesus was uh, was uh, had lots of tax, tasks. He was very busy. That week was a week in which he had to, in haste, put in order many things. Six days before he uh, arrived on Bethany, remember the house of Lazarus, that he had died and resurrected, remember? Then he comes and enters, and he was invited to participate on that service of glorification for the resurrection of Lazarus six days before the Passover. And from that day forward until the moment of his death, Jesus was would go every day to Jerusalem. He would go there and would come back. He was, he was sleeping in Bethany, and in the morning he would go to Jerusalem. It was a very busy week in which he had done many things. He brought many teachings. And it was a week in which Judas, he um, prepared the, the betrayal. And a week in which Jesus, he enters in Jerusalem. When he has the triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, where he enters. And there he was received by the Jewish people that came, Hosanna, saying Hosannas to the son of David. He was received, he was hailed as a king. A 
uh, and uh, doing all this uh, traveling to Jerusalem, he enters into a temple and see the people buying the lamb for the sacrifice. And that was not the instruction of the Lord. If we go back to the to Exodus, we see that instruction given to Moses by God was that on the tenth, uh, the twelfth day, the twelfth day of the month, the entire Israel, every uh, the entire Hebrew people have to choose, have to choose a lamb, young lamb, they have to bring them. That the lamb had to had to keep this lamb inside of home and, and stay with the lamb inside of their home for four days. On the, on the 14th day, that lamb would, that stay with them inside of their homes would be a sacrifice. And then they would make the preparation for the Passover. All the preparation, the people, people the, the preparation of the lamb for the celebration of the Passover. It was a week in which you would not find any leaven. No house, the Jewish house, would have leaven during this week. Everything that had leaven, every food that had leaven, bread, drink, that was uh, that went through fermentation, was cast outside of the house. They could not touch anything that had leaven. That was uh, went through fermentation. It was a week of, of purification, <coughs> and, and here in this moment here, people say that Jesus drank wine. Oh, that's not true. In this moment here, he drank grape juice because no one drank wine. They didn't drink the the juice of grape that was went through fermentation. They only drank the juice of grapes. And when Jesus comes here this day and called the disciples to prepare a Passover, they brought the, the grape juice and not the wine. There was no alcohol. And here begins the celebration of the Passover. It was on a Thursday for us, which be, would be Friday for the Jewish people. The Jewish calendar is different than ours. That time was the calendar. A day would begin on the sundown, and the day would end on the sundown of the other the following day. It was uh, it would six o'clock on the afternoon. And the new day would start. That's why on Thursday, for us, would already be Friday for them in Israel. And when Jesus arrives here to celebrate the Passover with the disciples, he brings something that the disciples didn't expect. He brings a revelation. He brings a new teaching regarding the Supper of the Lord. He didn't tell them, but there was the bread, there was the wine, the juice, grape juice. And then Jesus, firstly, he picks up on the cup of uh, grape juice, the wine, and he drinks of it and distributes with the disciples. And then he picks up the bread, he eats, and then gets another cup. And, and brings it and distributes to the disciples. Uh, if th there was some for me, would say, what? What happened? He drank twice? Well, because for the first time when he drinks, the, he drinks the grape juice with the disciples, he was saying something important to the disciples. Because here he was sitting down at the table, Jesus and the disciples, and no one else it was a moment of intimacy. It was a moment in which Jesus was telling to the disciples the following. Here, what I have, I give it to you. And what I go through and what I have been living through, I will share with you. 
this is a Jewish custom. People, when they received uh, guests in their house, they would share amongst them. It's a way of saying, we are very welcome in my house. So take up of my cup and eat of my bread. You are very welcome. Now you are part of my family. So my doors are open for you. And Jesus was speaking, he was saying that to the disciples, that truly they were part of the life of Jesus. And the disciples there, they had overcome, they had chosen the better person. They had overcome what was the human side of history, what was the Jewish history, and what was simply to know Jesus in a way that would not lead them to heaven. But now, at that moment, a new life would begin for them. A new phase in their lives would start, spiritually speaking. They, they have had overcome the human side and now that they were entering into the project of salvation of God in the life of man. Jesus said, here is my cup. Now, what you have, what I have, which is eternal life, I give it to you. And what I have, which is health, which is victory, which, which is everything that the Father has given me, now I share it with you. And then he begins the supper, and he picks up the bread, He's the, the bread and he says, this is my body that is broken for you. And then uh, now he takes the wine and he said, this is my uh, this is my blood. It's a new covenant. My brethren, the disciples could not have allowed Jesus to go away. Jesus could not go away without disciples knowing, truly knowing this new covenant this new way, this new way of life, because Israel, until then, that's how Israel used to live, like Jesus, during this week, he, when he was coming from Jerusalem to Bethany, and Bethany to, Jer to Jerusalem, from one of his wanderings, he saw a fig tree, and he wanted to eat of the fig tree, and the fig tree had no fruits, and this fig tree uh, dried up the following day, and that's what Jesus prophesied regarding Jerusalem, and he says that Jerusalem was going to lose a blessing, and that man, the salvation of man, was going to be extended to the rest of the humanity. Israel, until then, had not understood this. Israel had the entire promise of God, God had all the blessings from God, Israel had the Messiah, Israel was complete, was a complete nation, and they had everything, but they didn't have the revelation, they didn't have the understanding, they didn't have, have truly what was the project of salvation of God towards men. They had not been able to reach it. What they were doing was just a service to the Lord. It's like a mechanical service. And when Jesus entered into the temple, he gets upset and picks up a whip and begins to expel people from, from the temple. When he saw the Jewish people buying the animals that were going to be sacrificed, and Jesus wanted to say the following, look, what you are doing has no worth because this is all a mechanical thing, something automatic. You are not doing this for love. You are not true, uh, true worshippers. That's why Jesus, Jesus spelled from the temple those who are buying and selling things. Jesus was saying, that's not the, the way. That's not how it's supposed to be. The animal has to be brought into your house. The animal has to live with you. You need to, to be in love with the animal. You need to have an attachment with the animal. That's why, Jesus, uh, that's why God instructed the Jewish people, 
take the lamb, bring to the house, so that children may play with them, so that mother may play, so that father may know and start uh, establishing a, an attachment to the animal. My brother, this was one of the mistakes from Israel. We, we cannot make the same mistake. That's why the world celebrates the Passover, but Jesus brought for us the Supper of the Lord. Because the Supper of the Lord is a moment of intimacy between the Church and God. And this morning, we take part in the Supper here. It was a moment that was ours, a moment in which Jesus visited and God visited us. And when God was here conducting the praise, a sister had a vision saying this, that we received all the ministration of the acts of justice of God, whereby faith God brought healing, whereby faith God brought renewal, brought joy. And the angels of the Lord followed us all the way to our homes, to our work, and have been following us to this moment. You know why? Because we have learned one thing. Praise the Lord has to be uh, full-heartedly. Serving the Lord has to be because the Lord one day called us from the world, take, took us away from the world, that today I praise the Lord uh, out of gratitude for my salvation. We need to praise the Lord not in a mechanical way, uh, by force, but because we need to be in the presence of God. And that's what Jesus brought here to his disciples on the last Jewish feast that he stayed with the disciples. That's what he wanted to show. Look, the history has its worth, but the most important is this new phase, this new state, this new state of the life of the Jewish people. Because there, at that moment, Jesus establishes the doctrine. At this moment, Jesus relate to us and he brings us to an understanding that man will only be able to reach the kingdom of God if man is in Jesus. And that's what the Lord has shown. <coughs> when we do this, when we open up our hearts to the Lord, He takes control of our life. When we by faith place on the altar of God our necessities, our pains, and our, our joys, the Lord takes control of our lives. And He can very well transform the pain into joy. He can transform the sadness into rejoicement. He can transform what was coming to an end into something that has just begun. I don't know if you can say that. It just begun. Jesus can do this. Because Jesus has control over all things. We can do all things in the Lord. Nothing is impossible for the Lord. The Lord has shown here tonight that a man entered here that he has in his heart, in his heart the desire to finish, put an end to his marriage. Surely he cannot withstand anymore, he persist. He doesn't know whether it's right or wrong, but it doesn't matter anymore. One way or another, my, bro my brother, that is not true because God can do all things. If you look with your human reason, you may have your own reasons. But nothing justifies this action because Jesus is alive. He has overcome all things. And He wants to transform your understanding. He wants you to open up your heart and to accept Him and that you ask Him for help. <coughs> but not a, a, a request of help. Uh, not meaning it, but our hope is that you plead to him and place before God's feet this, this problem that you have, because uh, what you are planning on doing is not going to be pleasing to God. God is going to give you an understanding. Tonight the Lord is sharing with you his cup. God is sharing with you his wine, and he's telling you, I has, have overcome. 
and you can also overcome. Tonight the Lord is saying, look, that's not how it is, that things are going to be resolved. My brethren, the gospel is sometimes it's just simple to the point in which people may reject the gospel but the gospel needs to be believed according to what God has taught us it is worthless for us to be here like Israel was there the Messiah was present Jesus was present the law of Moses the priest the Pharisees everyone everything was right it is worthless for us to be in a church. Hey, Maranatha Christian Church, for many, Maranatha Christian Church is, is the church. It is worthless for us to be here if our heart is away from the presence of God. It is, there is no point. There is no point in us being here buying the land. It is worthless for us in doing our sacrifice when we are praying, pleading to show Him that we are serving Him with joy. What comes out of us is something that is forced, something that is mechanical, something that because somebody asks and somebody is going to look at, somebody is going to uh, request of me, we are not here to poli police anyone. What we want is that all of us serve the Lord <coughs> with joy. In order for this to happen, it's necessary that we open up our hearts and accept what Jesus ha has shared with his disciples. This is my body that is being broken for you. And this is my blood. And this is the new covenant. Amen. May the Lord speak to our hearts and that we, during the service, make a, a new decision in our lives and that we may leave the service loving more the kingdom of God and desiring, according to what Jesus said, I desire to eat with you this Passover before I perish and my desire is that we tonight may desire to be at God's feet and that we may desire to be in the arms of Jesus and that we may desire to be under the powerful hands, protective power hands of Jesus. May God bless us. Let us hear the song.
to God. We are here tonight celebrating about the life that is in Jesus. He died, but on the third day he resurrected. And we hear with him also we resurrect because every day we die for the world. But we resurrect with Jesus. That's why for us it is a great joy to be in the presence of the Lord. That's why for us it's a great feast to be able to make our offerings to our, our Lord and with a heart filled with joy that we can say this that the Lord is everything for us. Let us stand up. Kind of a word of glorification of the Lord. We pray for your infinite love that rescued us from this world and brought us to your presence, Lord. To truly live a life in Christ Jesus. Because you are the best for our lives, Lord. We praise the Lord. Because you reign in our midst. Because you are alive. Because we can see, Lord, the signs of the Lord. And we praise you, Lord. Because it's good to be a part of your kingdom. And to live on your holy presence. And to hear a sweet voice. To our heart, speaking to our hearts. Every time that we come to a house, we praise you, Lord. Because we can... Feel your holy presence in this place. We praise you, God, because your spirit has visited us tonight. We praise you, Lord, for this spiritual feast that you prepared for us, for our lives, for your chosen, Lord. We praise you because it's good, Lord, to be in your presence. We praise you for each life that you brought into our house tonight. To hear, Lord, from the part of the Lord, a word that has spoken to our hearts. I praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus.
Seja o nome do Senhor. Aleluia. Glórias a Jesus. Aleluia. A tu Senhor. Aleluia. A honra e glória. Aleluia. Aleluia. Before yet another night, uh, night in your presence, Lord. So grace may be once again with us. Through your Savior Jesus Christ. We may give our glorification to your holy name. We offer it to you in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. And then we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to its end. And you who are here with us that came to the house of the Lord, you are always welcome to this place. We have service every Thursday. At 8 o'clock, we have a service of doctrine. Uh, uh, every Tuesday and uh, Thursday, uh, prayer service at 8. At s Saturday at 6 in the afternoon, a service for the women. And Saturday also at 7.30 p.m., a uh, service of glorification of the Lord. And Sunday morning, we have uh, at, at 10.30, we have Sunday school so that we can learn more about the plan of the project of God for our lives. And also... At 6.15 on the afternoon is the youth meeting, and at night at 7.30, another service of glorification of the Lord. You are invited to participate in all of our services with us. If you need a prayer for your life, our clarification of the spiritual gift and what was said here tonight, remain where you are and raise your hand so that you may be able to identify you, identify you and the brand are going to give you the proper assistance.